I had goosebumps a while ago as worship the Lord. We, uh, one and all, and to see us around and uh, we ourselves connecting into the presence of the Father. I like us to look to the people in the both of our sides and give them a good smile and tell them I'm happy to see you today in the house of the Lord. Can you? Come on. Praise God. Praise be to the living God. Wow. Amen. Uh, before we go, Give to the message. Uh, we would just like to give a uh, few words of felicitation. Uh, what more would I say? Maybe welcome. Maybe I miss you or God bless you. Uh, to a brother here, to a sister there, uh, to a group here or to another group there. Well, thank God. Uh, new release for nurses just happened. Uh, I think last Friday or Thursday, and four nurses in Acts are being born. To God be the glory, we rejoice together for uh, Danica, the youngest of Sister Daisy. She's here. I miss you, Nana. You cut your hairs. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise for Danica. Danica literally, literally grew up in church. She started as like six, seven year old. The mom is now in U.S. And it's just them, it's a long and three of them, and uh, we're very proud of that and thankful to the Lord. And the next will be Marian already, we are in uh, of December. Amen. Praise the Lord. Marian and uh, Danica were classmates, uh, real uh, classmates, you know. Thank the Lord. And we're happy as well, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Get a mic. Uh, yes, John Paul, hello. I'm going to go John Paul. We miss John Paul for a while. John is now in Manila. I thought he left and went back already to Manila. We were talking. Uh, we were exchanging, you know, messages. Nice to have his son today. Uh, and of course, in Andi, uh, the patriarch of the Wagons, the very grandmother of uh, Ray J. Great, great, uh, the grandmother of Ray J. And uh, she's along today with uh, Sister Rose. We'd like to welcome you, Andy. Uh, may the Lord touch and minister as well to you uh, this morning. And all of God's people will say, Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord the right love and praise right now. Amen. Today, I'd like us all to rejoice together with uh, the family of Puyo Jun, the Solidads. After two weeks of battling their giants, long at last, they're able to slay their Goliaths. And the family are very happy and uh, more than just going through to the physical trial that they had. It's a real spiritual breakthrough and we're happy to see them uh, in the church today. I'm reading about the ordeal two weeks ago when the second in the family, Noel, is here. Uh, their son who had to go through a major surgery for his ruptured appendix. According to the doctors, it was only a miracle that she was able to survive because the rapture happened already for a week and uh, infections were now spreading all inside his vital organs and uh, indeed as the doctors pronounced only a miracle can make him get through it was a miracle look at him now and uh, it was such you know an appeal ordeal if the family would have to go through because the son needed to undergo twice surgery because of the infection. You know, I can relate to you one to the other testimonies of the family, but we still will have uh, celebrations in the world right now. But anyway, we rejoice together with the solid dance. Thank God. Let's give, a, let's give a lot of praise for that. You see, we are a family. One's burden is everyone's burden. One's joy is everyone's joy as well. We are a family. Amen? I'd like us right now to stand uh, for the Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, today I just thought of to speak this message about God's rivers. In the Bible, God speaks about a certain river, uh, the rivers of God. Torrens is, uh, torrents is uh, the other word for the current or the flow the deluge of uh, the flow of the rivers. You know, torrent is not just a steady flow of the river. Torrent is, you know, a, a mixed up strong current and uh, 
very loud flow of rivers. For example, when up in the mountains, it, uh, up in the mountains it rains and uh, waters just, you know, gather together and flows so boist boisterously up from the mountain down to the river valleys. The flow of the river is what you call torrents. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot help but go excited to the description of the rivers of God flowing to us His people in a torrentuous way. And you know what? Unlike to the world, when it rains and there are rivers flowing, destruction just happened all over. But unlike when the rivers of God flow through you, to you, to your family, or to our church, life happens. Signs, wonders, and miracles take place. Amen? And breakthroughs we receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody, everybody says praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'd like us to open please our Bibles uh, in the Old Testament.
for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three in one, there is only one God, the three in one, one God, amen? Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. The passage that we are reading, uh, the book of Ezekiel, uh, especially the later part of the chapters, most of them are symbolic. If, if you happen uh, to read, you know, the later chapters of Ezekiel, if, if you are not uh, much acquainted really to the scriptures, you can be mixed up and you can easily be lost what the Lord is talking to you or what the Lord is meaning. And thank God because we have the Holy Spirit to help us or make us understand what are the deep things of the Father here in this part of, uh, of the scriptures. And uh, as well, that is how we are finding the essentiality of us coming to church on Sundays. Something every time we read or we hear the word of God being preached or being spoken in the pulpit, it is one of our best chances uh, to be illumined, to be enlightened, that we can understand indeed what are you know the ways of God, what, what is the word God has for us behind of these deep things. And more of all, the later chapters of uh, the book of Ezekiel talks about the last days or the end times. Now, needless for me to convince you, I know you will agree with me, we now are living in the last days. I know you will agree with me, we are now in the end times. Amen. Let's give the Lord a couple of praise. Now, here we go. The prophet here saw a series of visions. Scary visions of what are to come or to take place in the end times. In fact, there's some parts here in the vision where Ezekiel was was you know overcome was overcome of the strength of the vision what of the vision to what he saw. There were sometimes here he got weak, weakened. There were sometimes here that you know he became unconscious when she saw the series of the visions that God revealed to him to take place in the end times or in the last days. One of which that he saw that in the end times, in the last days, out from the temple or from the throne of God, there flows, you know, if this is the throne, out from the throne of God, in the temple, from the base, there flows a river. And the river, the flow, the current of the river is very strong. And the river goes the strength of the current goes as like a torrent. That's why I'm inviting my message today, the torrents of the rivers of God. Amen. That, you know, in the vision, if, if you will read, you know, the whole of the chapter, at first the prophet was only standing in a dry ground. And little by little, you know, as the rivers or as the waters flow from the base of the throne, it went and go and increasing to be at the ankle deep of the prophet. I like you to touch your ankle bone with me. Come on, your ankle. Ah, this bone here protruding, you know, in your uh, in your feet is the ankle. Then it went on to be at the knee deep, then to the waist, and it went on going deeper and deeper as the waters are are increasing, you know, each minute until the prophet will have to swim just to be able to make it. It was an vision. It was an open vision. What the Lord is meaning there, that in the last days, the Holy Spirit shall come in a limitless manner. Amen? I'd like us to give the Lord a couple of praise. <laughs> Jesus spoke about the coming of the Holy Spirit. When he was intimately talking, conversing together with the twelve, he said, as I am living, and I am returning to the Father, God Almighty shall send you another comforter. And the Holy Spirit will not just be living around you, as it was and in, as, as it was the manner of in the past. But as the Holy Spirit will come, he shall live inside of you. I like you to beat your chest and say, the Holy Spirit is inside of me. Come on. 
Let's give God a couple praise. Come on. So give me the glory. And Jesus said in the book of John, standing in the middle of the feast, he was up in the temple. He was, you know, up on this stairway, and there, were, there was this great multitude listening to him, and he was yelling at the top of his voice. He said, He who is thirsty. Anybody here thirsty and are hungry for God, say, Praise the Lord. I like to pat somebody's shoulder and say, I am thirsty for God. Come on. Say, I am hungry for the Lord. Come on. Unless we are hungry, unless, unless we are thirsty, God cannot heal us. Proverbs said, you know, a full soul, the how much you will invite him for a good food, he will lose it. I don't. But for a hungry, a person thirsty, even the Bible said, bitter things become sweet to him. God can only feel to whoever is thirsty and whoever is hungry for God. Now on that day, great day of the feast, Jesus was standing and yelling on the top of his voice. He said, whoever is thirsty, let him come to me. For I shall feel and satisfy him. And then out from his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Now we can find and connect from uh, Ezekiel to the Gospel of John. There was the throne. Now inside our heart there is this throne. And thank God Jesus is the one sitting on the throne. Amen? Amen. Belly is not the literal belly, but the belly is, our, is, is our, our heart. And by the way, the heart is not this one pumping as you feel. Because you can still take this out and throw this on a trash can, but you still can have the feeling, you can still have the sense. Now in the Bible, by the way, when you speak about the mind and the heart, it only speaks for one faculty, it is the soul. That is why the Lord, when He says the heart is speaking about the soul, when the Lord speaks about the mind, it's not the brain, but it is the, it is the soul of the human person. Amen. 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 Jesus said, when we come to Him because we are thirsty, He will fill us. He will satisfy us. And the next thing to happen, out from our belly, meaning out from our heart, shall flow rivers of living waters. I believe with all of my heart, both of these passages, passages speaks for one thing, speaks about the Holy Spirit. You felt a while ago when we worshiped the Lord. Franz was yet sharing to us, you know, the preliminary verses. As he was leading us for an opening prayer. I was sensing already something different. Exceptionally different. I had my hair standing a while ago, and you know what? God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. The rivers of God is starting to flow in this place. Amen. Much as we were worshiping the Lord. You know, as we, we were raising our voices, our songs to Him, and we started to let loose. And we started, you know, to sing our worship. I was feeling the Lord really flowing in this place. The Holy Spirit. And many of us as we were reaching to God as we were connecting ourselves to the Lord. We were swimming in the blessings of the Lord. A while ago, we were swimming in the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a cup of praise? <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like us to understand, I'd like us to know, as I'm laying the foundations, the rivers God is talking about here is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the last days, which is the rivers of God, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the last days. Everyone say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God Himself. Now, going back to the verse, I'd like us to read them once again, uh, slowly and carefully, because, you know, I would like to build the whole of the insight of our message today in this passage. Now, can you still see, I mean, the font size uh, of our slide is that small? Anyways, I'd like us to read them one more time, real careful and real slower. Uh, we can get you know the substance. Here we go. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? The Lord 
talking to Ezekiel. He was showing him a vision. God talking to the prophet. Did you see this vision? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. As I went back, I saw on the bank of the river many trees on the side and on the other side. Trees. Trees here are people. It was a vision he saw in the last days. There were so many trees there at the opposite and here in this bank. Now I'm just thinking on the back of my head, were you around? Was I around maybe with this when the prophet saw this vision? Because he saw these trees and people as like trees standing in the banks and as the waters are flowing. Hello, are you are you there? And he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into Araba and enters the sea. When the water flows into the sea, the water will become fresh. And wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will leave. And there will be very many fish. For this water goes there that the waters of the sea may become fresh. So everything will lead where the river goes. Fishermen will stand beside the sea from Engedi to Emeklaer. It will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of very many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But its swamps and marshes will not become fresh, with one exception. And let us see, place our palms to our chest and say, God, come on, say with me, God, don't make me a swamp. Don't make me a, don't make me a marsh. Critical people. Critical to the works of God in the last days. God commanding with a strict rule. They are the exception. The Lord says, leave the swamps, leave the marshes, because they cannot receive anything fresh from the Lord. Leave them alone, the Lord says, for souls. And on the banks or on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month. Because the water for them flows from the sanctuary, the fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Wow! Very nice, very powerful. And I would like to explain them, you know, the substances and the contents of this vision or of this prophecy. Now, first of all, as I said a while ago, the Holy Spirit, the Lord says, when the water flows into the sea, the ocean will become fresh. Now, this is how things work. When, uh, when uh, rains happen in the mountains, they fall and uh, they fill, you know, river basins, lakes, and uh, you know, all 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 of the rivers up. And uh, waters usually, and indeed, this how this how it works. Rivers will not go up because by uh, by gravity, rivers are rivers or waters from the mountains are full way down into the oceans because the oceans is you know the lowest level of, of the planet the oceans the lord says the river of god as it flows from the mountains it will go to the ocean and as the waters of god the rivers of god touches the ocean the ocean's taste will change from salty into fresh one are you with me amen in Revelation, the Lord speaks. Oceans in the Bible speak about multitudes of people. Oceans or seas in the Bible, when it, when it speaks about, you know, visions with prophets in the old, seeing open visions, and the Lord gives a message to them. Interpretation for oceans in the Bible are human people. Multitudes of people. You know, this is what happened. I tell you, when we want to see a change, 
to somebody's life, to a person's life, all we need is the touch of the Holy Spirit. Even you yourself, you cannot change your life. Did you even try in the past or attempted to change yours? But to no avail or to every failure, you never were able to change, to transform yourself. It was only until when the torrents, the river of God, when the Holy Spirit hit your life, and there was that total turnaround. Amen? In the last days, listen to me, read my lips. There will be more and more people, very impossible to change and to transform. But when the Holy Spirit will hit them, when the Holy Spirit will come into their lives, you will be amazed. You will be, you'll be surprised to see how their lives transform, how their lives change. It happened so so several and many times, countless of times. There was there was a man in the book of Acts. Are you still there? Amen. Yeah? He was such an evil person, a cause of many deaths to many saints uh, in the book of Acts. He was by the name of Saul, Saul of Tarsus. And he even acquired some, some notes and papers from the Sanhedrin, you know, the highest authority from Jerusalem, to go to different cities. At the time, he was on his way uh, to Damascus to apprehend to us many believers. Because he wanted to incarcerate them or to appeal them, to kill them. But you know, on his way, halfway, while he, while he was in his horse back, you know, uh, his horse galloping and uh, running so very fast. Because, you know, his anger, because of his hatred against this new faith, he didn't know, he didn't know that who he was against of was God himself. And suddenly, there was this light that shone from heaven, it struck him to the intensity of the light that was released from heaven. Well, you know, it hit his eyes, it rendered him blind. Are you still there, amen? And he heard this strong voice, a sound from heaven talking, soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? And he was replying, who are you, God? And Jesus replied, I am Jesus. I am whom you are fighting for, I tell you, you cannot kick against a rock. I mean, who is hurt? Who hurts when you kick a rock? Is it your is it your foot or the rock? Is it the rock rather or your foot? No. You are hurting yourself when you kick when you kick the rock. You cannot fight against God, amen. And the story continued on. He was converted later. One whom God used. To touch his life was Ananias, an old man. The Lord told him, you go and pray for this man. He was such and such in his place. In a manner, for three days and three nights, he never, he never ate uh, any food or drank any water. He is in a fasting. He's seeking for me. And Ananias, you know, contended with God and he said, Lord, please, if there are any other person or any place you would allow me or send me to go, not to this man. Are you, are you not aware, Lord, that this man is an evil man and he comes here to kill us? Now you wanted me to go and to pray for him. And the Lord said, you do not know what are my plans because I will use this man mightily for my witness. And indeed, Ananias obeyed. He prayed for Saul of Tarsus. And from his blind eyes, fell scales, bigger scales, scales like scales of a fish. Now he could see. And the man, an evil murderer, because he was touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, his life was transformed, his life was changed. The soul of Tarsus later on became the Apostle Paul in the New, in the New, in the New Testament. Are you with me, amen? You know what, ladies and gentlemen, more and more people in the last days, believe me, will be touched by the power of God. And their lives seem to be solely as the power of God will hit them, as the power of God will, will come upon them. Their, their salty lives will turn to become fresh. Amen. Everybody says amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. And the second thing, 
Ladies and gentlemen, wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will leave. Mean to say, as this river will touch to wherever, every living creature that will be touched to this to this water, to this torrent, it will leave. In other words, the power of God will touch them, similar to, you know, to the above verse, similar to the above, uh, to the above scripture. There, how many people today are living in darkness? There, how many today are living in desperations? There, how many today are groping and didn't know where to go and what to do, and that their only hope, their only chance, is God Himself. The Bible said, when these waters will touch to whatever or to whoever, to whatever creatures or to whoever, they will leave. Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. I was listening to this pastor giving a testimony. I had my tears fell. Listening to him because, you know, I was moved to his testimony. Are you still there? Amen. At the age of five, his father passed away. He grew up as an orphan. I, I tell you, not easy to be an orphan. The Bible said, God Almighty is the father of the orphans. And he is the keeper of the widows. The Lord even gave us a strong command not to touch the widows and the orphans. Because if we harm them, it is the Lord who will stand against us. The Lord Sabaoth will be our enemy. That's why if you have a neighbor, a widow, if you have a friend, an orphan, ne never hurt them, ne never take advantage of them, rather show them mercy. Because as you will, God shall mercy you. Amen. Amen. But this pastor, at the age of five, their father died. The mother would have to find a job. Together with his other siblings, they were brought to an uncle and they grew up to this uncle. Good because this uncle is a pastor. They were trained and they were taught by the Word of God. But you see, this uh, pastor in his younger days still found his way to be to be wayward, you know? That's why when he grew up, he grew up to be a wanton, to be a naughty, and a bad, bad boy and a bad young man, involved to different vices. He's standing like five feet in height, really huge. And there came a time because he was desperate to look for a job and he was at the age of like 18 or 19. He was drafted to become a, uh, a Marines. He became a Marines and fought different battles in, in, in Holo and in, uh, in Cotabato and there were some times that bullets strained all over that he was to die. You know, night before the fight, he was drunk, or two nights he was drunk, but there, when they were in the fight and bullets were straying all over, he would just bow his head and remember the God whom he knew when he was small in the Sunday school, please Lord, spare me, I'll not die here. And to God be the glory, he never died. Until he retired from, uh, from the service being a Marine, and one day he met the Lord back. And that's that's how it started, you know, he was uh, serving the Lord and now he is a pastor. And he, he's bringing a sad message to what he learned and he received from the Lord. But the, the, the young pastor was not embarrassed to share that he was a drug dependent before and even selling drugs before. So, meaning, the river of God uses human instruments. You and me, we bear. You and me, we carry in our hands. We carry inside of us the rivers of God. We are His vessels. Those I mentioned, God can change lives. God can transform people's lives. There will be people to brought in the kingdom and God cannot and will not do them all by Himself. He will use someone else. He will use people, he will use instruments, he will use vessels. In other words, he will use you and me. Amen. Amen. 
As we live for God, the Holy Spirit will flow through us to give life to others. Amen? Amen. I'd like us now to close our, close our eyes and raise our hands and tell this to the Lord. God Almighty, I will live for you. Come on. Let's give him a clap of praise. <laughs> our family is very happy, very content now. After more than a week for our daughter, the mixed emotions we felt when she was leaving is gone and now replaced with joy and happiness. Gamaliel, he said, is graduating and he will on the 10th. She talks with her ate and uh, she, speaks, she speaks with her ate face to face. You know technology today through fiber? Very happy to see my daughter in the flesh. Last Friday, she's by the way now assigned to the to the male ward of the hospital, and uh, their patients are you know uh, middle class South uh, Saudi nationals, and uh, she was telling she was telling to us that you know the patients are gorgeous and. Uh, even generous after she serves them, uh, they usually would give by, you know, by gratitude, you know, chocolates. And she showed the chocolates to uh, her younger brother, and the, and the brother started to, uh, to salivate and envy. Oh, give us chocolates, <laughs> because the ate is not fun with chocolates. It's it's us, uh, little me and Nas, sister Delia, not even. So, you know, we are very happy to uh, how, how our daughter is doing well now in Saudi because it's her first time to be separated from us. She never had, had been, had been uh, away without us around. Her farthest to be alone was in Mu, and now she's in Saudi. Anyway, she, she will have to learn things because she's an adult now. But what we are thankful of more to the Lord is this. When she was in Zamboanga, she was too shy that she always retreats or retreated and reserved, you know, activities in the church. She rather would prefer to only stay in the house rather than to join. After all, she's the pastor's, pastor's daughter and sometimes I would, I would feel, uh, you know, embarrassments that, you know, my daughter, as the dad is the pastor, is not attending and joining. But you know what? What's uh, happening now? They are five. The batch who flew and uh, were together when uh, they left from the Philippines to Saudi. The four, three of them, something like from uh, the Visayas and another from Luzon, because all the rest of them are new and are staying just in the place, so they, they feel vulnerable. It's my daughter, now the one, encouraging them and inviting them to attend church or in a Bible study. I cannot believe my daughter very shy, very retreat, and very, very reserved in Zamboanga City, now being used by God in Saudi, far from us. Saudi is the other half of the globe, half of the globe away. When we live for God, I tell you, you may not know how to speak English. You may not know things, but as you live for God, the Holy Spirit will flow. Will flow through you, and the Holy Spirit will use you to bring others' lives to the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Now, hear what the Lord is saying. Are you still with me? We're almost done. Now, the Lord says, Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail. This is what the Lord promises. He promises prosperity in our lives. That our leaves will not wither. Our fruits will not fail. That meaning all of our dreams, all of our ambitions, all of our desires will allow the Holy Spirit, Spirit to flow through us. The Lord shall bring to pass. What the Lord promised to us is only and strictly and solely and exclusively His promise and his destiny for us is blessing. Hello, amen. amen. Nothing more, nothing
nothing else, nothing less. He just wanted you and me to see our lives being blessed. Let's give the Lord a cup of praise. Come on. Maybe for a while or for some times in the past you went through a lot, but they are not the end. You're not bound there forever. Maybe they were your teachers. We're learning some good lessons, but your destiny and what the Lord draws you for your eventual, He wanted you to be blessed and to be blessed forever. Amen. Amen. That your life after you being blessed, your life as well will become a blessing to others. Praise be to the living God. And the next the Lord says, they will bear fresh fruit every month. Imagine. Our blessings will not be stale blessings. I mean to say, the blessings of God will be up to date. Amen? Amen. What were the blessings last month were the blessings of last month. A lot of blessings today. Amen? Amen. Amen? What were yesterday is already a yesterday. As if he said, yesterday's manna is a rotten manna. The Lord's manna is fresh today. Amen? Amen. That's why with all of my hearts, beginning a few weeks ago, many greater things, more beautiful things will land and will happen to many of our, to many of us and to many of our lives. I shall believe and I do believe that with all of my heart. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord says, their fruit will be for food and their leaves will, will be for giving. In other words, as the Lord will bless us, our blessings as well will become a food for others. I mean to say, you will become a source for others. And our leaves will be healing for others. You will become an encouragement for others. You will become an example for others. You will become a hope for the hopeless. You will become a light for the people who are in darkness. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. In you and through your life, many people will be touched, will be touched by God. And many people will come into the kingdom of God because of you. Amen? I'm, I'm also a human being. Like anyone else, I go sometimes with certain extremes. Many of you perhaps cannot believe that I can be hungry at times. Many of, you some, many of you perhaps cannot believe that pastor can sometimes go impatient. You ask this to Galia. Because I'm a human being. But you know what? The Lord showed, I will end here. The Lord showed me for several times, I really will be effective if I am sour. I really will be effective if I am rude. I really would be effective if I am, you know, in my emotions. You know, sometimes I go along with, with others, I cannot help but become sour. Certain times I need to be stern. You know, when I when I talk, sometimes when, when there are those like to agitate you, I mean, I'm not talking about church members or you, but you know, unbelievers. Like you go to a shop or you talk to strangers or a tricycle driver or to a jeepney driver or I mean to talk to strangers. They are bad to you and your challenge sometimes, you know, I, my, my emotions as well are like steered that I fight back. And the Lord would show me, son, you really cannot be effective. But you know what? I just become myself by the grace of God's sweet. I just become myself as nice. I just become myself all the time, smile. And you know what I have found? You know what I noticed? I become effective. Hello, amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, your life, my life, our lives, God wants. God wants us to become a blessing to others. That He wants our lives to become healing to others. Amen? amen. Ladies and gentlemen, today, by the grace of God, just receive. Just receive the flow of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, just right now, today, right this very moment, receive the flow. Receive the flow of the pouring of the rivers of God. And let the rivers of God turn things around in your life. Arrange what are mixed up in your life. And, let, and allow His power 
Allow His power first to transform and change you. And through the transformation and the change that is to happen in your life, let that reach to other people as well. Amen? You received the Word of God this morning. Amen? Let's give Him a clap of praise. Let's all stand before God. Let's